This is Rage K, and today we're going to be covering some of the research that was done within this checkpoint research. It was a recently released blog post where they outlined how North Korea has been targeting individuals with certain laws, and then after the victim was successfully infected, they'll drop rock rat and a few other pieces of malware. Reading through this documentation I found it incredibly interesting as to how North Korea is infecting their victims and so I want to cover some of the techniques that they use here. The techniques that we'll be covering in this video can be outlined looking at this graph provided by Checkpoint. Uh, it starts off with a zip file, leads to a .link file and then that will run PowerShell. It will drop and open a PDF file, also run a .bat file, then PowerShell and that will download and execute a encoded loader and rock wrap payload. So we're going to be concentrating on the process from the .zip file all the way to the PowerShell file. Now the laws look like this and they seem to be written in South Korean. So targeting South Korean victims and outline some political information really looking to infect important people. Now what we start off with is a zip file. These are the files that you'd be receiving if you were a victim, just the zip file, you extract it and you're met with some PDF files, docx, and a file that looks like a shortcut but is mentioned in the name to be a, some kind of pipelines profile. This would probably be interesting to somebody who works in government work. So are some of the files that look like proposals for certain political actions. And this shortcut is the start of the infection. While hovering over it, we can see the location is pointed to CMD. But if we look at the properties of the file, you can see that the target here seems to be spaced out. If you keep an eye on the size of the file, you'll see that it's 43 kilobytes and the target is a CMD process. But if I cancel down to this and refresh, we see that the file size has changed to four kilobytes. So this file somehow contains some information that we want to extract, but when analyzing it manually, you'll see that it has some issues. I'm gonna show off at all how we can easily analyze this. In this coverage of a blog post, we can see a few indicators on how to analyze link files. And I really recommend this if you want to understand link files a bit better. But what they use as a good tool is Eric Zimmerman's LEC CMD. And this is a file to pass link files. So I'm going to download this and use it on our link file to try and get some more information without relying on the basic Windows tools. So running LEC CMD, we can see some of the options here. And usually we just want to go with the simple first example of LEC CMD with the file pointer here. We could also output it to JSON with pretty, but I'm gonna concentrate on what might be in the link file first, but it also supports all kinds of different usages. So make sure to read through this to find out if it can help you with other things to do with these link files. Now running it, we just need to call the binary and use tacf and point that towards our link file, which is the pipeline file, and then pressing enter, we can see some information. So starting from the top, we see that administrative privileges were not found. It may require these to find out more information about the file, but here it should be fine. It was created on 2023, and this is just where it was extracted and zipped up. And then the headers seem to have some flags of relative path, argument, has icon, is Unicode, and has some strings and so on. It will then also call the show window flag of SW show inactive, and this will display the window as minimized without activating it, meaning that no window will be shown when ran. Afterwards, we can see the argument, and these are the most important parts. We can see these are the arguments that are used when pointed towards cnd.exe. So I'm just going to copy and paste these, and we'll take a look at those later. And besides that, we don't have too much information, just a bit about the console and so on and so forth, but these commands are the most important. So I'm gonna quickly put those into PowerShell, but before I do that, here's a quick word about guided hacking.
we can use generic beautify on it to easily read it and after doing so we can then look through the code and we will see that it first runs PowerShell with the window style of hidden. It sets the directory path of get location. And then if the directory path matches system32 or the directory path matches program files, then it will set the directory path to temp. And then it will set the link path of get child item path directory path recurse for the link file and where the object has this following length. The PDF file will be called with GC link path encoding by and then this count and read count. So they'll just be getting the file itself and then setting a path of the following in temp with the following numbers.pdf and we'll copy those bytes into the path. But what it's doing is it will also take the files that it's copied from the results of GC and it will XOR them with the first byte of the file. And it'll do the following as well for the bat file as well. And after that is done, it will copy those files into the paths and it will run that bat file. Along with the bat file, the PDF will also be ran and the victim will see the PDF, think that they've gotten the correct file, but that bat file will be running in the background. So let's take a look at that bat file. So I've gone ahead and taken that command and I've neutered it so that it won't run the batch file after doing the extraction, but will still carry out everything else so that it will correctly find and create that bat file and PDF file so that we can analyze them. Now I'm going to run this and then we can get the files from the file explorer, which is pointed to the temp file where the next stages should be dropped. And after running it, we see that the two files were dropped here. We see the bat file and the PDF file. So we can go ahead and we can analyze these. The content of that bat file contains this command, which is just a PowerShell command, which will decode the following bytes here. If we open it in the generic code beautifier, we can see that it goes through a for loop of the, of the encoded string. It'll convert into int 16 with some of those bytes and then we'll invoke command of that script block. And so I'm gonna quickly run this command and just echo out some of these um, scripts and we can take a look at them. After running the bat file that I used to decrypt that encoded data, we can copy some of that data and again, put it into the generic code beautifier to understand easier what it may be doing. And it seems to just be setting the security protocol, uh, getting this to an object. It'll then import kernel 32 DLL. It will set some of that up and call virtual protect as well. And then it will call out to a web client with the following OneDrive link and create a thread from the content of that OneDrive link. This is an oversimplification of what this is doing, but it is attempting to basically load the next stage of the North Korean malware, which will be the rat. And besides that, this is really what I found most interesting about the blog post, but I do encourage you to go and read it for yourself. Until the next video, Goodbye. If you enjoyed this video, a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. If you haven't already, check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalogue of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.